What's going on everybody, Wild Time here with another World of Warcraft video. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be checking out uh, another content creator's video. Uh, this is from Bellular. A lot of people know him. He's a big creator and he's been nice enough to get a list of things together for us that we need to complete before pre-patch or it's going to be going away. Also some things that are coming in pre-patch. So we're going to watch this. Uh, we're going to go through it together and we're going to see how we can save time be prepared and get the most out of the pre-patch and the weeks leading up to it. So let's get right into it. Welcome back. Pre-patch is not long away. It drops on the 23rd and the event starts on the 30th. Some content will be removed from the game. Some things will stay. Some things will be easier than like leveling while others will be harder. So the mission for me and my team today is to help you sort out what you want to do next. Let's talk about raids. So the Awakened Raid rotation is going to continue until the pre-patch event begins. After that, all three raids will become permanently awakened until the War Within launches. Now, of course, you don't need to... So if you don't know what Awakened Raids are, maybe you're not a big raider. Essentially, they did this in Shadowlands um, as well. Uh, they have the raids. Right now, they're on a rotating schedule. They, so it's Blizzard's way of like not having the raids just be garbage, right? So... Or, or useless rather or not have any you know merit or value so typically the raids would work like this you start an expansion you have a raid you get another season you have another raid you get another season you have another raid and there's previous raids nobody does them because there's like no point to them so what they start doing shadowlands is making them awaken so now what what happens is uh those earlier raids they get this affix called Awakened, and it rotates throughout the raids that re were released during the season, um, and it adds different kinds of mechanics to them, um, essentially. So that's that's what Awakened raids are. Clear them right now, but it would leave you with some time to focus on preparing alts, enjoying the new transmog uh, stuff, because it's going to be way more efficient and doing things like honing your UI. Now, clearing the Awakened raids on normal difficulty has to be all of them. That'll reward you with the Voyaging Wilderling Mount. It's quite nice, and it's also Skyriding enabled. Then clearing all Awakened raids on heroic difficulty gets you the Awakened Hero title. Push that to Mythic, and you will unlock portals to each of the raids, and those portals will be a bit of a lifesaver for farming up your transmogs later. Plus, pre-patch makes them way more useful because the likes of them and the dungeon portals are being made account-wide with warbands. To do some specific... Yeah, so uh, Mythic, you know, if you, if you get into a Mythic group there mythic you get portals heroic awakened you get the title but uh really doable is doing the normal uh, raids on awakened and getting the mount which uh, to me the mount is like the coolest so I, I would if i was doing anything i would just go ahead and get the mount um and if you're a gold maker you probably got enough gold saved up to buy this i see this advertised all the time in my realm people are, are running people through them uh for gold but uh, I haven't done much with it this time, but in Shadowlands, it was super easy. Like, I went in as a tank and cleared everything without any kind of issue, not even really knowing what was going on in that normal. So, I'd give it a chance in Group Finder first before you pay for it. Mounts. Well, the ahead of the curve for Rack, which is this like shadow flamed up version of him, super it actually cool. does remain available until the pre patch. So, if you missed it out in season three, you've got. Another cool thing, uh, I haven't got that yet. I, I really uh, I need to get it again thing about being into gold making is that i haven't rated like at all in this expansion uh but i've got enough gold i can buy it from somebody selling selling that uh, run so it's pretty sweet i think i gotta make sure i get that got another chance now and you can obtain it by defeating farak on non-awakened heroic difficulty which of course will be considerably easier than the awakened version that you'll have to do beyond the pre-patch so definitely hit that up now then of course the mythic farak mount will become significantly harder after pre-patch don't know about you but uh, i don't think super sick druid flight form right here um but you gotta do it on mythic I think I'm doing Awakened Mythic anytime soon. What that basically means, though, is that if you go to a Mirdrasil on a non-Awakened week, that's essentially your best chance to clear it in Mythic, which, of course, is your way to get that mount. And then when the War Within officially launches, this mount will be following the rules that we basically expect for the Mythic-only mounts. It will go from a 100% drop to a 1%. I think, I think that's a Druid flight form, right? I'm pretty sure maybe it's a regular mount, and then uh, Druids can use it for their flight form percent drop 
just a hell of a lot harder. Next then, Legendary. So, farming for Najiro and Feralath will be a little bit more challenging post-pre-patch. The items you need come from Sarkareth and Abaris and Farak in Looks Emir cool. Drasil. If you've not acquired them, definitely now is the time to do that, because again, all the raids will become permanently awakened, and it being awakened like it doesn't increase your chance of getting the legendary item. Next then, some mount things. So, there are mounts that have drop rates that will not change with War Within, but they will become much harder to get. So, I'm talking about things like the Razageth transformation from Super Vault, sick. the Shadow Flame Highland Drake that comes from Abra's, so cool. and the Red Farak from Amir Drasil. Awesome. Basically, it'll be harder in the future when those mounts are super sick. We're in that little period of time where our characters aren't quite powerful enough to solo the prior expansion, and where you'll probably struggle to get enough players together for a group. So Yeah, so basically, in the War Within, your gear's not going to be good enough in Season 1 to come back to these raids and start farming them um, efficiently. So it's going to be harder to also get a group, is all we're saying there. Oh, now's definitely the time. Okay, and speaking of raids, we've got the Antique Bronze Bullion. These are pretty big. Now, they will likely disappear when the pre-patch ends, and you definitely do want to make use of them. You can earn these by defeating Awakened Raid Bosses, and of course, the Mythic Dungeon Weekly Quest, whenever that appears, gives two of them. And even LFR difficulty rewards these, right? So, you really, like, if you're far behind, do not worry, you can get them from LFR, and there is substantial catch-up. The way it works is you can normally loot one bullion per week, but the catch-up system kicks in if you have essentially fallen behind the curve. So as an example, say we're 10 weeks into the patch, I have 10 bullion by playing, and you have got zero bullion. Well, I would keep on just getting one per week, but you would be getting multiple until you're caught up. They'll just keep on dropping if you keep on doing the content, and given that they drop from LFR, it is dead easy to catch up. So you definitely can catch up, and while you can spend them on really powerful gear, that makes no sense. It's the end of the expansion. There's no point. What I think you should do is put them into the cosmetics vendor. Yes. It sells raid weapon transmogs for one bullion each. Uh, you even get to pick like what color of gear you want. So with enough alt, you could make massive progress. Progress. And like seriously, in terms of the quality of art, there are some really cool weapons to get there. Now you can also get, very unrelated, the Jigglesworth mount, which is a bit weird, but basically it is. Yeah, so he's going to say it here in a minute, but this is, this, I, I like this mount, right? It doesn't, I don't, I don't think it flies. I don't really remember. I haven't been on it in a while, but this was Shadowlands um, Awakened uh, Raid Achievement, which was super sick. And I, so I, I did get this one from Shadowlands. Uh, so I wonder if they're going to do the same thing in the War Within, where at the end of it you'll be able to buy the um, Awakened uh, Raid uh, mount from uh, Dragonfly. It is the Shadowlands Season 4 mount, and uh, it's otherwise unobtainable, but you can buy it for only 3 bullion. Basically that means, focus on the bullion, you'll be able to get loads of weapon transmogs, and also a yeah, mount. Yeah, if you don't have that mount, get the bullions for that mount, it's a cool mount. Dungeons then, Season 4's end marks the disappearance of several Mythic Plus rewards, and the season will end with pre-patch on the 23rd. So here's what you can focus on until then. If you hit 1500 rating, you'll get the Draconic title. And with today's gear, that seriously will be a walk in the park. Hit 2000 rating gets you Keystone Master, which of course gets you the infinite Armageddon mount. So I, I've got the mounts from season one, season two. I don't know about season three, but I know season four. I uh, I haven't played a lot, and um, I just these are just recolors, right? Like all the season mounts are like recolors, and and they don't fly. Um, and you're gonna be able to fly in the War Within, so you know, like right out of the gate. So the use of ground mounts is, is like less and less. It does look cool, but I don't know. I've got other stuff that I want to get done. So I don't know if I'm going to put the time in to, to really get this or not. It's a pretty neat little mount, actually. And again, with today's gear, 2000 is real easy. Then at 2500, you will get a feat of strength. But that is not all. Time any Dragonflight dungeon at plus 10 or higher, and you'll earn a portal to that dungeon. And again, with War Within, those yeah, so remember, plus 10s are not like plus 10s were in the past. Plus 10s are, are actually reasonably difficult. You used to, I think you used to have to do like a 20 to get the portal. Um, so now you have to do a 10. So it, it's not like doing a, a, a 10 from season 3, though. Those portals will be account-wide, which will be dead handy for getting around the world. Oh, and another thing that sucks is that when Blizzard did this, they decided, at least the last time I got these, they decided not to make these things account-bound. I don't know if that's changing or not, but it only came on the character that uh, 
I completed the dungeon and didn't feel counted. Finally then, for the elites, there is Draconic Hero. That is for getting a top 0.1% Mythic Plus score. Uh, yeah. If you're watching this video, you're, you're probably like me and uh, firmly out of the running for that. Let's knock out PvP. So, 1800 is what you need for the elite armor sets, 2400 is what you need for the elite weapon arsenals, and of course for that you also get a tabard. Then, there is the gladiator's mount. Looks pretty nice in it super for 53v3 matches above 2400 rating, and if you're going super extra hard, there are the top 0.1% titles for 3v3 and solo shuffle. The other side that's far more achievable for most of us is the vicious mount. It is from filling this bar by doing solo shuffle arena and RBGs above a rating. So frustrating. I usually start this at the end of the expansion and uh, just play it like through. But solo shuffle, especially like if you're doing solo shuffle or just PvP in general, the longer you wait, the harder it is like to get groups. At the beginning of the season, everybody's doing it. Right now, at the end of the season, it's like, especially if you're a DPS, it's, it's hard to get groups unless you have like actual people that you play with that you guys can get into the group or whatever. But uh, I'm at like 48% or something, and I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to drop it. I did get, I did do it enough though to get the Conquest gear for my Warrior, which is pretty cool. Um, and the, the 1800 um, score, uh, the, I think the, Transmog's the same as it was last season, which is really dumb rating of 1000. So that's rather achievable, but this is not a full FOMO situation. The way that the vicious mounts work is that you can actually buy prior ones using a saddle. So basically, don't worry. Yeah. Okay, but what he did mention is so to do that, you you have to fill the bar up, get the current season mount, and then fill the bar up again to go back and buy previous seasons. So it is it, it'll be available but it's more work. Mob Remix then, it ends August 19th, which is just a few days before the War Within Early Access begins. Same. Now, that's the tail end of the pre-patch. You don't have to fret right now. You have loads of time. There are, of course, a ton of cosmetics to be slurped up, but I think you should be focusing on the ones that are exclusive or otherwise are very, very hard to obtain. Yes. What that means is all Feet of Strength achievements and their rewards, the Garrosh Heirloom weapons, the class sets, which are actually recolors of the Trading Post set, the Theramore Tabard and Toy, and finally, there are the 32 mount recolors. That is quite a lot. Good news is uh, I've got something to make it easy for you. A tracking spreadsheet. Got all you need, bronze costs, check marks for everything so you can actually Crazy. track your own progress. <laughs> and the good news is Blizzard substantially buffed bronze rewards from just doing the daily quests, LFG, and a few raid clears. It is now blazingly fast. Also, leveling. I mean, you can level from zero to 70 in like two to three hours depending and then that level 70 when the war within hits or when when this is uh remix is over i don't know if it's when the war within happens or when remix is over but one of the two um that level 70 will then become a regular uh, player for you to to play so very very efficient way of working Black Market Auction House, if you've got cash to burn, now's the time. The current inventory of the BMAH rotates out at the end of August. Now, I'm actually not talking about the auction stuff that we've had for years. No, this is a new vendor at the Black Market Auction House that is just packed with gold-themed recolors and, uh, I guess they probably are made of gold because they're bloody expensive. Didn't anyway, even, I didn't it costs you hell of a lot, didn't even but know they, they had do that. rotate out pretty soon. The next thing, a quick note on Dragonflight Cosmetics. So this is not essential, but I do think it's something that you should do now because it will be easier when Dragonflight's content is populated. Basically, the Dragonflight tier sets, honestly, they look pretty damn fantastic. Getting raid groups is I going agree. to be easier now than it will be in the future. The other side is actually there are crafty ways of earning these tier set cosmetics. We made this video a while back. It's absolutely crowned full of pointers, so I think you'll find it helpful and now is absolutely the time. A World Awoken. Okay, that is the expansion-wide meta achievement. So, tier sets as well. Like, you can get your tier sets, even from PvP. Like, if you get Conquest, you can go to the Catalyst and then have them changed, and then you can get another uh, recolor of that tier set as well. And once again, earning it, like, it's a big feat, and it's one you should do now, because once again, it will be harder when the Isles are depopulated. Okay, so now you know what stuff's going, or at the very least, what will be a little bit harder to obtain. Next, let's talk about preparation, actions you can actually take. So, 
The pre-patch will bring blazing leveling speeds. So whether you're choosing mob remix or chromey like time walking stuff, you'll be zooming from 1 to 70 faster than ever. And that means that actually right now is probably the time to focus on other things rather than leveling. Yes. Especially because, of course, any leveling that you do via the Radiant Echoes event will also earn you that event currency. So you may as well focus your leveling time then. But there is crucial action to take before pre-patch, and that is create an evoker no matter what. Currently, evokers start at level 58, but post pre-patch, Evokers will start at level 10, like any allied race. So by creating an Evoker now, you are saving yourself 48. Yeah, but I think to create an Evoker, I think you need to have a level 70 on the server. And then I think you can only create one, right? Evoker, is that still, that's still how it works? You have to have a max level and then you can make one? Eight levels of, of leveling. That'll save you time. So that means create one now, do the intro experience, and just park the character at a capital city to earn some rested XP. Professions are next, and War Within makes them far more playable. Big picture, it is still the same system as Dragonflight. Mm. Professions will carry over, but now is a real good time to get familiar with them. You see, Dragonflight's usability problems, like you often feeling behind on knowledge, those were kind of rough, and the War Within is trying to fix them. They've also got Concentration, which is basically the replacement to the RNG of Inspiration, and that makes a bunch of the crafting a good bit more predictable. And also, there are NPC crafting orders, loads of them, right? And they refresh twice a week. That makes your progression far more smooth, and as a form of catch-up, well, well, if you're really far behind, they will be spawning more of those NPC work orders. So that basically means if the profession problems of Dragonflight really meant that you didn't engage with it, now is a brilliant time to plan your professions and get ready for the expansion. And this kind of thing, a little bit of planning goes a long way. And there is another thing tangentially related, the Warband Bank. That's just going to be great generically, but it does straight up revolutionize multi-character crafting yeah. because it centralizes your crafting rage. Yeah, this is like one of the best things ever. So the amount of bag sorting drudgery that is going to be fixed by this is kind of wild. Thing is, though, it comes at a cost, yeah, right? Yeah, like $3 million just over to get 3 all million gold to unlock all of the bank slots. The good news, though, is that getting the first few is a lot cheaper. Point is, here's how much it costs. That's a lot of money, and you should probably work bah. out what your gold earned yeah, gold is. Get it right now. So you can make the most of that when the expansion comes out. And to make that seem just a little bit more alluring, there's actually a quest that will give you a toy, and that toy lets you just access this bank anywhere. Which yeah, so that's, so that's really cool. You get that from, at least in the beta anyway, you get that from a short quest line right there at the beginning. Um, and it's like a portable bank. Uh, four hour cooldown, though. Uh, it's pretty damn crazy. You basically have got an account-wide stash. Okay, yeah, it's awesome. next, I want to talk about some things that you've probably been putting off. Little frustrations, bags, UI, things in WoW that actually do feel like work. The way to do this is to think, what will my future self be glad that I did now? For me, my to-do list is basically cleaning out the bank and the bags for all of my characters, which is a lot. Clearing out quest logs. I'll be looking at add-ons and doing a full cull of the stuff that I'm not using or won't use. As an example, the likes of prior expansion weak aura packs or ones. Yeah, so this this is a lot for a video game, right? Like, I think, like, we're not playing, like, Call of Duty or, like, League of Legends here, right? I mean, this is, like, this is a pretty immersive game. So, um, he's right. My bags are crazy. I still have stuff from, like, BFA in some of my, in some of my bags, uh, in my banks, rather. So, clearing those out, taking time. You're not actually playing the game during that time, but you get that stuff from playing the game, whatever aspect you're doing. Um, so yeah, there is a little bit of maintenance involved, you know, in that, especially with like, you know, the, like you said, the weak auras, um, the add-ons and that kind of stuff, trying to start uh, the war within, uh, as fresh as you can. It's a good idea. Some Dragonflight content that I'm just not going to be needing. Doing your spring clean is super high value. Nothing is worse than logging in on launch day just to be driven mad by your UI or kicking yourself for not emptying your bags. Yes. And one of the best things with WoW for me is the guild that I play with. So if you're not in a guild, now is a really good time to start looking because lots of guilds will be recruiting. Then a quick note on Transmog. So whenever pre-patch hits, anything in your bags will actually be learned account wide. That's of course because with Warbands, you can learn Transmogs from other armor types. So That'll awesome. be great. It'll give you a big day one surge for your mod collection. I'm certainly wondering what will happen with the uh, Illidari Warglaive in my Hunter's Bank. 
Now, a quirk of this system is gear tokens, right? They cannot be used by the wrong class, but pre-patch will make them warbound, which means you can send them over to your alts. Okay. So basically, the thing to do is do not go and sell all of the like random vendor trash in your bags. Keep that stuff there because it will be learned account-wide whenever pre-patch happens. If you're, say, leveling characters just because that's what you want to do right now, and you get bits of gear that the character you're leveling cannot use, keep them. Put them in your bank because, again, whenever the pre-patch launches, that stuff will be learned account-wide. Other than that, you can prepare with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of experience. There's a bunch of lore that leads into this expansion, so if you're not up to date with it, you may as well actually decide, you know what, this is perhaps the time uh, where I'm going to start paying attention to the yeah. story. If you do, I think you'll actually get more out of it, and we will have videos to help you with that coming up pretty soon. Another thing then is... Okay, so the story... <laughs> Dragonflight story was, was not one of my favorite, but like in, in the end... Uh, basically there's some, you know, dragons that were sent in, there's some primal dragons, and, like, they come back, and they're, like, mad, and then people are mad at the titans again, and you have to protect some stuff, and then, if you, if you get a chance, go watch the end cinematic for, uh, for Dragonflight, some of the raids, I mean, they, they basically, like, defeat the bad guy with the power experience of friendship. Because now is actually one of the best times to not play World of Warcraft. You will likely enjoy the War Within more if you've just played other games and had Yes, don't don't burn out before don't burn out before this uh, new expansion hits. Talking to myself here. A good time, such that whenever you come back to World of Warcraft, your palate has been cleansed and you can actually taste the difference in the new content, rather than it feeling like one big blur because you're always playing. I mean, I your palate has been cleansed and you can taste the difference. <laughs> I love that. That was good, uh, but, he, but he's right. Anybody that's played this game, I've been playing this game for 12 years now, uh, a little bit over. And so if you come back in, because I took a break in Season 3, have a Season 4, so I'm back in it. Um, but I don't want to burn myself out before the War Within comes. So, um, yeah, just making content and, uh, you know, cleaning out bags and just having fun. I'm playing the beta and stuff like that, uh, just learning a little bit. So, uh, yeah. So, Bellular, he's got some good stuff going here. Uh, a lot of good things um, that, you know, to think about, things to do to get ready. Uh, nice list. You can make a little checkbox if, if you want of uh, what to do. Clean out the UI, clean out your bags, you know, get some of those cosmetics, get some of the season, like mounts and stuff like that. So, just things to sort of spend your time doing before the actual pre patch comes, because the pre patch is going to come and put an end to quite a few things before the War Within actually gets here. So, keep that in mind. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking out the channel. Let me know what you think, what you're planning on doing for pre patch, what you're excited about. Have fun playing the game, and I'll catch you all later.